Hi everybody, here we are again, and I've been gifted three large bags of apples. They're a mixed variety of cookers and eaters. So we're going to see if we can make some cider. First things first, I'm going to weigh the apples, see how many there are. So that should give us an indication of how much juice we're going to get. And then we're going to shred them in the um, food processor and then press the juice out in the rather heat processing press that I've got. And I made it myself. Presses, well, it's just a framework. Uses a six ton bottle jack. I have got an eight ton one as well. Um, but to be honest, the eight ton one tends to bend the framework a little bit, so I have to stick with the six ton. And to be honest, you get very little juice extraction between six and eight tons. You've got a stainless steel pot, billy, billy can. A couple of blocks of wood. The outer of a wheel burning, that's just as a spacer because I have a polythene top for the can which fits in after you put the crushed apples in. It's a close fit to the, to the pot. You have to put it in sideways slightly due to the rivets on the on the handles. So I'll let you look at that. That's how close the tolerance is. So it's not a million miles away. But you've got a bolt through the centre because when I first made it, it didn't help. And I found it was nigh on impossible to get it back out once you'd stuck six tons of pressure onto the apples and glued it in place with apple pulp. Underneath another piece of polythene with a groove down the centre that I routed into the uh, into it. It's all sat just on a cheap workbench. The look how it sits on there. That sits over there, fermenting, fermenting bin, sits underneath, collects the juice. Got to show you this bit. I'm just cutting the apples up roughly. That's only so they'll actually fit in to the uh, food processor. Um, I'll show you the, the grating plate. So this is the plate that we're using, it's the one that does fairly fine sort of slices, always does, has two blades that do the same, turn it over if you want to actually slice, this one does strips, the strips is the ones that you want, so you put it, get it as fine as practically possible. You don't want it too fine because it's just hard work. So strips. Once your food processor is full and with shredded apple, you can start then putting it straight into the bucket of the press, but ensure that you have a fermentation bin sat underneath it because even before you start pressing you will get juice coming out of the uh, of the of the pulp. Right, that fire container is full of shredded pulp, so that's the, the pot, the press pot about full. Time. Might do a first manual press, might be able to get a second, and oh, oh, sorry, no, a sixth. Just 
pot there slightly. Might be able to get another pot of uh, shredded apple in. Give it a good press first. Wash my hands. So, just by a first manual press, we've got that much juice out, which is what, perhaps a pint and a half. And I think I should be able to get another container of pulp in. So I'll do another pulp, and then we'll do a first press. shreddings left. That's the reason for the burning out too. Push that back. It looks way out of the back. And then I'll get one block on there I think. Put the block on that already has the witness marks. pressure on the jack a little bit more even so at this point before you start really putting a lot of pressure on I'll show you there the we have juice squeezing out of the top and running into the bucket before you put more pressure on cover everything up Especially if you're working in the wife's kitchen, because the dust sheet that's under the workbench will cover everything, because as you start pumping the pressure on, bits will start spraying everywhere, and when you hear nice soft furnishings, you don't really want that. So, dust sheet that covers everything, and then pump away while carefully watching. So, I'll show you. Here we go. There's the juice just pouring out. But at some point, the pressure is going to get to the point where going to say I want to go somewhere else and I think that's nearly it it's going to start spraying so we'll leave it there to drain at that and then give it a few more pumps in about five minutes 
Here we are, day two of pressing the apples. This morning, uh, I transferred across the apple juice from the collection pump uh, vessel to this fermentation vessel, both fermentation vessels. And there's approximately five litres, so just under eight pints. Eight, sorry, just under eight kilos of apples uses five litres of juice, which isn't too bad. Uh, over the course of the day, the press has produced. Just over 200 mil more. Thought I'd just show you the apple cake after we finish pressing. So, we've got a prize the lid out. And that is pretty much solid. Pretty much dry, and that will just go straight into the green bin. Won't get right. composted. Finished shredding and pressing the apples, and there was about 29 kilos of apples, and it yielded 15 litres, which I think isn't bad. Uh, specific gravity is 140, so I'm just going to pitch the yeast at that. That should come out to around about 4%-ish, which is fine by me. I don't want a strong cider. I don't like I prefer sessionable beers, sessionable drinks rather than anything that's going to blow your cap off. Right, so we'll be back in a week's time after it's fermented or so. Hey everybody, here we are again. Quick update on the cider. And you'll see, perfectly clear in the glass, a nice pale pinky orange colour, unfortunately, a little bit stinky on the nose. Uh, that'll be my own fault. I used Tronosamil, best yeast nutrient best yeast nutrient that there is on the market uh, well that you don't make yourself perfect for making wine if you want to, certainly a strong wine or you've got a stuck wine tranosamil is the way to go it will generally sort things out but one of the ingredients is magnum magno can't speak magnesium sulfate now that will most likely translate to um, sulfur dioxide rather than carbon dioxide that yeast normally produces so a rather stinky beer fart shall we say it's actually not as bad as it first was couple of days ago in, in the barrel but yeah it's still got a slightly can't beat the bones about it so it's got a rotten egg smell taste wise it's all right a very delicate apple flavor 
there is a slightly lingering rotten egg. It's probably coming through the nose afterwards. Mm. It's drinkable. It would have been better without the yeast nutrient. Never thought about it at the time. It's absolutely fine for wine making. The professional formula for discerning winemakers. Well, that's because after it's finished fermenting, before you uh, uh, rack it, you have a tendency to degas wine, thereby knocking all the sulfur dioxide out of the uh, out of it. Unfortunately, I didn't degas the cider because you tend not to do that. You try to keep it because it's like a, like a beer, and you tend to try and keep all of the gas in that you can. So, mm. delicate, interesting aroma on the nose. It's beautiful, as I say, nice. Just don't sniff it. Right, so I've got about another eleven litres of this in the barrel, something like that. It will go down quite easily, I'm sure. But Lessons to be learnt and brewing cider. Probably need some sort of yeast nutrient because apples don't have quite the same vitamins and other little bits in that grain has. But beer you tend not to need any sort of nutrient because the grains provide ample fruits we tend to have to add something in, but not from Osinol. From Osinol? Yeah. Something that doesn't contain a sulfur-based salt. Magnesium sulfate in this. Carbonate is fine. Magnesium carbonate. Trace minerals, trace vitamins. Phosphates will be fine. It's the, the sulfates you don't really want for a beer or a, a cider nutrient because mm, eggy. Right, cheers. See you next time. Lessons learned. Bye.